So here's my new gearbox. This is the engine, which is actually a Roltax motorcycle engine twin cylinder. It's a hell of an engine, actually, in a motorbike. It'd go like stink. It's a good engine. I think you could probably get about 80 horsepower on every tube bit. So really, it's a beautiful engine. Sadly, a generator. This is the motor. Quite big compared to a Tesla, it's tiny. I've got it all taped up and sealed because obviously these motor tails are there, so the three phase windings are there. I've got the uh, electrical machine electronics down there, and that's the safe and bagged up. This is our kind of gearbox uh, casing. I just found there's a tooth missing on the differential there. Well, there's quite a few teeth missing, and on this drop gear as well, you can see there's some teeth missing there. What's actually happened is it looks like we've got that debris there. It looks like the bottom diff bearing's gone. And obviously it's took the teeth out, so there's no point doing anything with it, obviously. It's the world's thinnest gearbox. They're about six inches across. This is the solenoid system, which it's uh, for the parking park. There's huge parking parks, they're massive. So this system will kind of pull up and... How can this chat kind of with one hand, but it'll lock in place. And there it's come out, it just locks in there. There's your part, though, so that's out of it in a lock position there. And at least, it has a solenoid. Again, a gear-driven gear one. Like, that's like a stepper motor type thing. Or maybe it's just an actuator, not a stepper motor. So that's where I'm up to with all that business. And there was our engine bay. Not much in it. A bit like a Porsche, innit? Well, not like a Porsche, but... Similar idea. I kind of love working on back of cars, it's more fun. Look at the size of it, it's awesome. So basically the whole thing carbon, the life cell, as they call it, or life module. And all this is a really beautiful die cast. It looks like die cast aluminium or forged, but probably die cast, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, hell of a job. That's a, there's a fuel line down there, there's an evaporation line there. And then the uh, DC DC converter, which is on the electrical machine electronics, basically is. You've just got that the positive main power supply for the car, main ground for the car, for the low voltage electrics. Uh, that's actually a fuse and distribution block, is that? It's almost the same as what you have in F30s. And equipotential bonding lines everywhere, really. Uh, not so bad, really, once you get the hang of it, but it's, uh, it's a big job. Got to make sure now I get all this. Uh, back together tomorrow. Unfortunately, we thought we had these bolts and stock which bolt the electrical machine to the gearbox, but uh, we don't have them. We've shown that we haven't, but we don't have them. The huge 12 M12s, but they're aluminium. They don't weigh anything. Light and feather, and we've got to replace them. Because it tells us to, and if you snap them, we're in trouble, aren't we? This is also an interesting thing, what you need to do. I've been reading on the instructions. You've got to get all the grease out of here, and then some special grease called, I think it's called GE grease. You just put it on the end there, you don't ever put it on the splines and when you bolt the gearbox to this electrical machine it'll push a hydraulic pressure if you like push the grease and displace it down the spline and that way it doesn't get into the into this area here which could be quite catastrophic they say and then obviously when you're building it up you've got to put some grease on this uh, on these two o-rings a little bit of this ge grease you know it's the first time i've done one actually Pretty cool, I'm enjoying it, although there's a bit of a tight schedule, like I say, as per usual. And it's a bit unusual in that you set the engine away from the gearbox first rather than the gearbox from the engine. Then obviously you separate the gearbox and the motor. So, <clears throat> all's well that ends well, we know what's wrong with that now, don't we? So tomorrow I'll get my parts, whack it all in, build it all up. Um, then hopefully get rid of this i3s sometime, God knows when, maybe end of week. It's the first time I've done one, so obviously it's going to take longer than if I've done like four or five or six of them. Uh, yeah, good to strip it because I know now if mine ever goes wrong that if I start hearing some type of noise, I'll pull it apart quickly before the bearings go. Uh, if the bearings start to go before it starts making a crunching and grinding noise, it's only whining, then it's good to, just to know that, well, all I need to do is change the bearings. Funny that differential because it has roller bearings, which is really like ball bearings. So they say, um, unusually they're tapered, aren't they? Tapered, tapered rollers. But on that, they're just they're just plain old ball bearings, like a skateboard wheel. And I wondered why my car it does whine a bit, but obviously with 
ball bearings they are quite noisy with those you know just balls just conventional balls that's probably what it is anyway soon the weekend and uh, probably more work to do at home never never ends does it but it's good to be alive isn't it yeah see you later dudes <laughs>